Hello, this is Pastor Ronnie Wolf, pastor of First Baptist Church in Harrison, Ohio. And I'm glad to uh, bring another video uh, to you. It's been a while because I've been very busy, but I'm going to try to make uh, at least one a week if I can, maybe two um, from time to time at least. But today I would like to talk to you a little bit about the power of the gospel. The power of the gospel. I have uh, three points <clears throat> that I'm going to bring to your attention. And uh, the first one is the presentation of the gospel. The second point is the power of the gospel. And the third point is <clears throat> the persistence of the gospel. My text is uh, found in Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Many of you know that verse. It's a good one. And... Uh, it reads like this. It says, uh, Paul is writing here <clears throat> to the church at Rome. And it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it, that's the gospel, is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. So Paul, the apostle, is not ashamed of the gospel of uh, Christ. In fact, he loved the gospel and preached it to everyone he met. And so then he was pure, he says, from the blood of all men. He says that in Acts 20 and verse 26. He said, wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. The gospel, it, uh, our text says, is the power of God. First to the Jew and then to the Gentile or to the Greek. Paul always, uh, as you know, when he traveled, he always went first to the Jew, literally. He would uh, go into a city, <clears throat> and the first place he would go would be the synagogue. And uh, he would preach the gospel to them. Most of them rejected the gospel. Some believed. On one occasion, many of the priests believed. But then when they began to reject the gospel in great numbers, uh, he said, I turn to the Gentiles. And so uh, the reason he went to the Jew first is because his heart was on, on the Jews, on Israel. Because he states himself to the Romans in chapter 10, verse 1, he says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. In chapter 9, he says, that, that he would give up his life in order for Israel to be saved. Paul also preached the gospel to the Gentiles, of course, because he was an apostle to the Gentiles, called of God to be an apostle to the Gentiles. He tells young Timothy in 2 Timothy 1.11, he says, Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. And... Uh, he, as we, are to preach the gospel close at home and even in the regions beyond. We read in 2 Corinthians 10, 16, to preach the gospel in the region beyond you and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. So he went into places where the gospel had never been preached and he insisted on uh, preaching the gospel first to many of these Gentile people who had never heard the gospel at all. Now here at First Baptist Church in Harrison, Ohio, we have 21 missionary endeavors. And they reach from local areas around the world for the preaching of the gospel of Christ. We're called missionary Baptists. We believe that we must preach the gospel to every creature. As Mark 16, 15 says, he said unto them, go into to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So then, we who are saved are ambassadors for Christ. An ambassador carries a message of his, uh, uh, the one who's over him, his supervisor or his boss or um, whoever he represents. Of course, we are ambassadors of Christ, so we represent Christ. And so we're his ambassadors to carry his message. It says so in 2 Corinthians 
520 where it says, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. And so that's the presentation of the gospel. We should always be ready to give the gospel to anybody. We need to prepare to do that. We need to pray to do that. And then we need to present the gospel to uh, people who've never heard it or people who have heard it many times and yet that one time that you give the gospel to someone the Spirit of God may use that to regenerate a heart bring them to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ that's why we have to continually preach on it we'll talk about that in our third point but the main point of the message is point number two is the power of the gospel uh, our text again says for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Now we need to understand that the power of the gospel is not inherent in the message itself. But the power of the gospel is in the power of God. Our text says it is the power of God. There are several scriptures that mention both the gospel and the power of the gospel. We've already noticed Romans 1.16. But let's go over to Romans 15 and verse 19. And notice what it says there. It says, Through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about into Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. So, so Paul mentions here that uh, he has fully preached the gospel of Christ from Jerusalem and around the Lyricum. But notice that he did it by the power of the Spirit of God. So the power of the gospel is not in Paul or even in the message itself of the gospel, that is, of the words and, and the order that the words are in and so forth, but the power of the gospel is in God and in how God will use the gospel message to save the lost. Another verse that we could notice is in Romans chapter 16 and verse number 25 where it says, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. And then he goes on and talks more about that. Uh, but then in, in, these, in this verse and the two verses that follow, they're words of doxology or words of glory to God for his work and salvation and the establishing of the church at Rome. God establishes them by his power, verse 25 says. It says, according to my gospel. It's God's power, but it's according to Paul's gospel, the gospel that Paul preached. And of course, if, if anyone preaches a different gospel, the Bible says he should be accursed, or he is accursed. Galatians 1 tells us that. And so according to my gospel means that God's power uses the gospel message itself to bring men and women to salvation by his grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And then he establishes them by his power in the gospel to encourage and exalt them to work in and through the local church to glorify God. Romans 16, 27, the third of those three verses says, To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. So there's the doxology, the glory of the Lord, that we give praise and glory to Him for what He's done and for His power. We go next in our scriptures to 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 12 where it says, If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. So this power over you is God's power of authority, an authority that Paul had to oversee the churches. And that's the power that God gave to him. Paul is referring here to the authority he had to receive money and support from the church at Rome. But he says that he did not insist upon their support, 
un unless uh, unless it's voluntary. Not that it's required by him. He didn't charge them to come and preach the gospel to them. So if Paul used this power to insist on their carnal support, he would be using his own authority, not God's authority. But the power of the gospel is in God, not in Paul. So he says then, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. If we preach the gospel in our own power, then God's not in it. And we hinder the work of God that's uh, it's used to the preaching of the gospel to save the lost. Now that doesn't mean God can't save that person. It just means that our words are not the power that saves them, but it's God that intervenes uh, in those words and fills those words uh, to the point to where the person listening to the gospel will receive it and and understand something of the mystery of the gospel and realize they're a sinner and they fall down before the Lord and trust him as their savior. And uh, so Paul makes the gospel a simply uh, carnal discussion and not a message from God if he just preaches it out of his own mind and his own heart and his own logic. But he thinks that it's a message from God breathed out from God and he submitted uh, to it as ambassador for uh, uh, ambassador of Christ or for Christ of this great gospel. Now we want to notice a few verses below in 1 Corinthians 9 18 where it says what is my reward then? Verily that when I preach the gospel I may make the gospel of Christ without charge that I abuse not my power in the gospel. So Paul says if he preaches the gospel only for earthly gain, then he abuses his power in the gospel. Because God will not work through a person who preaches for gain. Notice what Paul says to young Timothy in 1 Timothy 6.5. He says, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. So Paul, in Philippians 3 and verse 8, he says, Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. Now see, that's where we're supposed to be. We're supposed to put no trust in our own philosophy, in our own thinking, in our own ideas, in our own power and effort, and put it all and surrender all of it over to the Lord and not only uh, admit that he is the one who does the saving and it is through his power that the gospel works, uh, but also that we are to submit ourselves to that power. And let the Lord do it and not get discouraged when we preach the gospel and people do not believe. There's no reason to be discouraged. If we give the gospel to someone, we've done our duty. We've done what God wanted us to do, especially if it's done in a pure heart and a sincere desire to see people saved. And in the, in the true uh, interest of that person through the grace of God that's been given to us. So we're to be true servants of Jesus Christ. And if we are, then we're going to count all things but loss. That is, all these earthly things, but loss. We can't serve Christ in our own strength and our own wisdom. But Paul continues in Philippians 3.10, and he says that I may know him. Of course, we know that's Christ. And the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings, having made... Uh, uh, conformable unto uh, or being made conformable unto his death and so the power of the resurrection see that's the power it's not the words we say it's not just that Jesus died was buried and resurrected it's not just those words and that message that's the power of God it's the power of the resurrection that Jesus actually did go to the cross that he actually did die and that he actually resurrected from the dead. 
and uh, we can have the fellowship into that suffering being made conformable unto his death which means when we trusted him we uh, were conformed to his dying for us on the cross because it's that work that he did his perfect life and his perfect death and his resurrection and his intercession for us that is actually the power of the gospel it's not just the words we say now it's wonderful that God has given us the words to say to people to tell them that they need to repent of their sins and trust the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior but that's not the power we must depend on the power of God to do the saving now let's hurry on let's go uh, quickly to 1st Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 5 where it says for our gospel came not unto you in word only but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake when God brings the gospel into the heart of a person he sends it with power power to save power to keep power to strengthen power to encourage power to give heavenly witness a wisdom to us power to stir our uh, hearts to tell others and the power to stir a person's heart to serve the Lord with gladness and zeal and, and to bring new life to those who hear the gospel and the power of God works in their life to change them uh, and make them a new creation in Christ and they believe and trust in him so the power comes of course from the Holy Ghost now we go to 2nd Corinthians chapter 1 verse 8 where it says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel, according to the power of God. So in this great verse, we see that we're giving, uh, or we're going to, to need the power of God again. But this time, it's energy and might, not authority. It's a different Greek word. We need this power to partake of the afflictions of the gospel. You see, some people don't like the gospel. They don't want to hear the gospel. Some even hate the gospel and the doctrines that surround the gospel, that hang on the gospel of Jesus Christ. They'll even endeavor to destroy what we call Christianity and especially the churches of the Lord Jesus. And they'll do that by all kinds of means and ways. Not only by the the physical power of the body but but also by the power of, uh, of deceit coming into the churches and destroying the foundations of the faith and the doctrines that hold the church together we need the power of the gospel to strengthen us and give us wisdom to partake of these afflictions that come along and we need to pray that God will give us this power because we know that the world knows not God and are without salvation they're aliens and enemies of God and so we don't need to be surprised when afflictions come but we must have spiritual wisdom to know the devices of the devil and to stand firm in our faith in the gospel to stand against the wiles of the devil because he's a trickster point number three is the persistence of the gospel Paul had a great compulsion to preach the gospel because he says in 1st Corinthians 9 16 for though I preach the gospel I have nothing to glory of for necessity is laid upon me yea woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel and that's what I call persistence we need to be persistent there is a necessity there is a need not only just for the gospel to be preached but it's a necessity in all of us who are saved to preach the gospel and especially to those who are preachers and missionaries and deacons and teachers and, and the like, evangelists and all. And so, woe is me, he says, if I preach not the gospel. And that's because God gave him the job to preach the gospel. Now, he did other things. He taught a lot of deep doctrine, church doctrine and, and doctrine of the second coming and all kinds of doctrine but woe is him if he preached not the gospel and I believe it 
probably was Spurgeon who said that any text you take to preach on, you must end at the cross. You must preach the gospel in every message that you preach. Because you see, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. In Acts chapter 14 and verse 6, it says they were aware or aware of it and fled into Lystra and Derby. That is, they were aware of the afflictions and so on. Cities of Lyconia. And into the region that lieth round about. And there they preached the gospel. So in the New Testament, when, the, when many of the believers, the preachers and the apostles and different ones preached the gospel, and a city would not receive it but rather wanted to kill them, they just went over to a different city and began to preach the gospel there. But the, the, the main thing to understand is that no matter where they went, the number one priority was to preach the gospel everywhere. And we are to preach the gospel everywhere we go. Even under stress, under hardship, under affliction, under persecution. So we may have to go from town to town. But we all need to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 6, 19 says, And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. So Paul prayed that God would give him the boldness to utter or to speak the gospel of the Lord Jesus. Colossians 4, 3 says, With all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. See, he was in jail because he preached. But he preached in jail. And he preached to those that were keeping the jail. He Everywhere he went, he preached. So here is the power of the gospel, that we pray that God will open unto us a door of utterance, that we might proclaim the mystery of Christ, which is the gospel, as we read and we've already read in Ephesians 6.19. And so we must be persistent in preaching the gospel. We can't open doors of utterance. God has to do that. We cannot give a simple carnal message of the gospel because it's God's message, not ours. We can't persuade someone to receive the gospel message. God has to do that. Paul, in his brilliance, is the only man on earth, apparently, who could almost persuade a man to be a Christian. But he did not persuade him. The power of God was not there. So when we witness, we must talk to God about the sinner before we talk to the sinner about God. The power is in God, the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit must lead us and guide us and work a miracle of grace before salvation will come. But we must preach the message nonetheless. Because Paul said in Romans 10, 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. He also said to the Ephesians, in Ephesians 1, 13, He said, In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that ye believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So get out your Bible. Read your Bible. Learn some verses. Pray to God for help. Ask for opportunities to give the gospel. Be concerned about the salvation of people. Ask your preacher or your teacher to teach a course on scriptures you can use for giving uh, the gospel and for defending the gospel. But always... Always remember that the power of God is in the gospel, and it's not your power. Remember that the power of God is in the gospel, that it's God's power, it's not your power. May God bless you. Hope you remember these thoughts, and uh, we'll see you next time, Lord willing.